Hello, my name is Jerry Schroeder, and as a scientist, I'm often asked, is it, are there any data that indicate that there's a part of us that lives beyond our body? People would call that heaven, perhaps. I'll call it mind. Is it possible that Descartes got it right, that there is a mind-brain duality, the brain being our physical self, and the mind being how a part of us that communicates with us but is not actually part of our physical body? which would mean, essentially, life after death. A continuing life, since the mind is already there while we're living, and it would just not be limited to the, to the physicality of the, of the body. Erwin Schrodinger, Nobel laureate, that was one of, the, one of the founders of the whole quantum revolution, quantum physics, uh, which is, happens to be the physics that allows your iPhone to work and allows this, ca this camera to work, writes very beautifully that we are not really in this physical picture. We are outside the, the physical picture. The reason that we think that we're in the physical picture is our brains are in this picture, and that is the only way that we can communicate them. So here we have a person, Nobel laureate, hard, strict science, telling us that there are data that indicate that there is a duality. Descartes talked about it 300 years ago, the mind-brain duality. People say Descartes is dead. Descartes is, was 100% right, but he didn't have the information that we have now, the science that we have. So I think first in this approach, I want to show that there is a duality in the world, and that's the famous wave-particle duality. It seems bizarre in the extreme, but every aspect of our existence, our being, out the atoms that make up our body, and even bodies, but the larger the item is, it's harder to see the duality, is that there is, a, there is simultaneously, everything is both a particle, fixed edges, and a wave that extends forever. And this is just, this is, this is what allows your iPhone to work. So realize, and it also is what allows the sun to shine as well, the wave-particle duality. So we now establish scientifically that there is a duality in the world, that, there, that things appear both one way this way and one way that way, totally incomprehensible. But the physics of the world today is useful and usable, but also totally illogical, or another way of saying it, can, incomprehensible. So we have a duality. Now the question is, does any of this duality extend to our biological brain, metaphysical mind system. So for that, I approach it what's called inductive reasoning. I look at a lot of cases, many cases, and see how they flow together, giving me a general principle. Okay, my background's MIT, bachelor's, bachelor's, master's, PhD, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, all of them, five years, actually seven years on the physics staff. So the science thank God I have behind me, and, 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 and we're trying to see now from the science, physics, biology interface, what, what's the indication? We know something very clear in, uh, by inductive reasoning. I, I use this for the brain. The brain has systems in it that, are, that exist to map the outside world. That's what the brain is about. Our life takes place in here. I st in a completely silent room, I stimulate the auditory part of my brain. I hear sound. I hear, I hear sound. But I know there are sound waves out here, that when those molecules, which are the sound waves, bang in my ear, I have sound. So I can measure sound out here, and I know I have an antenna that is dedicated to sound. I know that there's a dead part of my brain that's dedicated to vision. In a, in a pitch black room, I can stimulate the back of my brain, and I, I see, and I, it's a hallucination, but I see light. On the other hand, I know there are light waves out here. If they hit my eye, nerve reactions, etc., and I see light. So I, I, I can measure these things. I have touch here. I can feel touch here. And, and I realize in my brain, I can stimulate a part that is telling me, why, because my fingers really itch. But there's no itch. Every part of the brain with sound, taste, smell, garlic, I stimulate the, the, ner uh, the nerve endings that are sensitive to, to, to smell, and I smell garlic even though there's no smell of garlic around at all, but there are garlic molecules out here. So by inductive reasoning, I see that every part of the brain has a part dedicated to sensing something outside the brain, whether it's a part in my a part on my fingers, wherever it, wherever it is, whether it's light waves that's separated from my body, that's what the brain is about. And we know also 
we know also that when that when a part of the brain is not used, then that brain is take part is taken over by another part. This is many scientists work on that. And the, the, the most one that I know is Rebecca Sachs back at my alma mater, MIT, in, in which she has done interesting research with, with persons whose vision is destroyed, but the visual cortex in the back of the brain is fine. Within several years, the, the neurons that are the neurons that are related to to sound start to take over the neuron, the area back here. In other words, the brain is aggressive. If it's not used for one thing, it's taken over and used for another part. And now we come to the key aspect of this. I work by Olaf Blank, B-L-A-N-K-E, a Scandinavian world-renowned neurologist, discovered that in the brain, there's a part of the brain that when stimulated, that when stimulated, it induces in, induces a uh, a feeling of a body outside the body, okay? A me outside. And he published this in the journal Nature. Now, Nature is one of the two leading journals of science in the world. And Nature found it interesting enough, and he labeled it stimulating out-of-body experiences. What he did was it stimulated a part of the brain and you felt that you were outside of you. It's like a quote from Schrodinger. We are not in this picture. We're outside of the picture. And what you get is you feel yourself looking down on your body. If our inductive reasoning is right, that every part of the brain such senses something that is external, external to the neurons of the brain itself, whether it's part, other part of your body or outside totally, then we have to be fair and consistent with our inductive reasoning and we know that that we that we are having this outside of our body vision credited when you stimulate that part of the brain it's a hallucination well you stimulate the visual cortex it's a hallucination also but it's always there the the me outside of me exists we can't measure it because it's metaphysical but we can measure the antenna in the brain that is sensitive to this, what Blank has done. And so we do, and Blank does not talk about heaven, and this will make it very clear. He just is exposed this, this part of the brain. I am saying that that indicates by logic that if there were not a me outside of me, my mind, in active contact with my brain, then that part of the brain which Blank discovered over the eons of time of, of our brain's development would have been taken up, usurped, taken over. The fact that it remains is there is a you outside of you. And you are the you you are outside. The you you see in the mirror is only a very small part of you.